My name is Megan. You're watching Miss Megan Knits. Links to find me, contact me, whatever, are all in the description box below, as well as links to everything I talk about in this video. So, um, today, what we are going to be doing is reviewing a book. Here I have the Mitten Handbook, Knitting Recipes to Make Your Own, by Mary Scott Huff. And this is the book I'm going to be reviewing today. Now, I've decided to put my Spark Notes version of the review right at the beginning so that everybody knows how I stand on this book before I go into all the details. I thought this was a really interesting book. It provided a lot of individual mitten kind of components to experiment with. Um, it provides a lot of information on mittens. It provides a lot of good, detailed uh, resources about mittens, mittens, mittens different constructions of mittens, different traditional types of mittens, recommendations for gauge and ease, um, all kinds of things like that. So it's a very helpful book. It also has patterns that are already made up in the back, and these are some of them. They're beautiful. They're beautiful patterns. They're very complicated. Not complicated. They're, they're written out really well. They should be easy to do, but they're very um, intricate looking and professional looking. I would really recommend this book to anyone who wants to experiment with mittens, um, as well as anybody who is really confident in mittens and is looking for a challenge. Basically, if you love to swatch, if you love making individual components and trying to see how they fit together and experimenting and doing that, this is the book for you. It's got all of that and more. This book may also be helpful for designers, anyone who's looking to design their own mittens, um, this book may be a great resource for you. For beginners, I would say most of these patterns and components are at more of an intermediate to advanced level, but if you are motivated, if you're not afraid to try something new, if you're not afraid to frog a couple things if you fail, this book could really advance your skills. You could learn a lot from this book. So keep on watching to see why I came to those conclusions. Right off the bat, what do we notice about this book? It's an interesting size and shape. It's not really a traditional book size and shape. It's lightweight, very lightweight. It's a paperback book, has 158 pages. The covers fold, which I love for marking pages. Say so I wanted to mark this page, I can just pull the cover right in and it doesn't damage the book in any way. Plus it's built right into the book, so I don't need a bookmark or a sticky note. Although you can see, I do mark pages with sticky notes. Minimalist cover design is, I think, really very interesting. And the mitten in the cover is a top-down construction mitten. You can see the needles are here and it's being knit this way, which is not the traditional way mittens are constructed, uh, but the book does provide helpful explanations on how to construct a top-down mitten, what the pros and cons of constructing a top-down versus a bottom-up mitten may be. Um, it goes into that in great detail, which I think is really cool. The back cover, as I pointed out, features four beautiful pairs of mittens, and instructions for all of these mittens are included in the back of the book. Full, complete instructions so that you can make these exact mittens if you'd like to. Let's crack this baby open, shall we? It's printed on beautiful glossy paper. Good for reading and good for standing up to repeated use, but it is bad for taking notes. Uh, pens do smear, pencils don't write very well on it. If you're gonna take notes on this book, I would recommend using sticky notes. Um, or a good pen, like a Sharpie, that won't smear. Uh, there's plenty of what's called white space in this book. And you can see like all down there is white space. All down there is white space. There's plenty of room for your eyes to meander. The words aren't cramped up on the page. I know, especially with knitting patterns, say in a magazine, uh, the words get all small and teeny and crammed together and it's hard to read and this is definitely not having this problem. There's plenty of open space for you to rest your eyes on or for you to take notes if you really want to take notes in there. The pages are colored um, in different colors. So see, this one is pink and blue. This one is blue, but the colors are, um, they're not always light. Like this pink is kind of dark, 
but they don't impede the clarity of the writing. You can read everything really easily. The pictures stand out really beautifully. The color isn't a distraction and it is not a problem. And the pictures, beautiful colored pictures that look like they're part of the book. The details on the mittens and the pictures are shown very clearly. You can actually see the individual stitches. You can see the cabling clearly. You can see uh, knit pearl textured patterns that are on some of these mittens that um, can sometimes be very difficult to photograph. So it's very good that these pictures are taken really well and they really show the mittens off. Let's get to some of the content of the book. Although I won't be able to show much of the book or read any of the passages for copyright reasons as well as because I want to let you know enough so that you'll know whether or not you want to buy the book but not so much that it spoils the whole thing for you and when you do decide to buy the book if you decide to buy the book so the basic setup of the book the book is mostly made up of what author calls components uh, pieces parts considerations um, constructions things like that that will go into the process of designing your own unique mittens they include considerations of yarn, gauge, and ease, as well as instructions for different edge treatments, cuffs, thumbs, and tops. Also included are 20 mitten patterns made up of these components. The author encourages the reader to either follow the patterns as written or to customize them by taking the individual pieces and parts that are in the pre-made mittens and swapping them out for things that the um, reader would find more desirable. The book talks a lot about mittens, obviously. What are they made of? How they're traditionally designed in different colors. Then we get to the mitten design worksheet, which I'm going to flash. You're going to want to photocopy this page as you want to use it again and again and again. This worksheet walks you through step by step determining your stitch counts for each section of your mitten, no matter what yarn and gauge you specify. It's pretty amazing. I can't show you its wizardry, but you'll have to trust me. The component section starts with edgings, then proceeds to cups, thumbs, and tops. The selections of these components are wonderfully creative with options that I personally had never seen in mitten patterns before and I would have never thought to do myself. I would, however, as a newer designer, like more insight as to exactly how to adapt the numbers in the patterns, in the component patterns to match numbers of my stitch counts. Um, I had a very hard time adjusting the components to make things work properly, especially with the thumbs and tops as those can be a little bit tricky. I would have liked more guidance as to uh, the length measurements of the hand um, as opposed to just the width measurements because the worksheet's very good at providing uh, width measurements, cast on numbers, things like that for all the different parts of the mitten separately so that the mitten fits really well. The problem is it's not very good at providing me with length measurements, uh, where to start the top, for example, where to close the top of the thumb. And I had a little bit of issues with finding good fit in doing those things. Also would have liked more guidance as to why to choose which component. The book contains very detailed instructions for each component, but it does not tell me anything about why or how to use it. For example, the thumbs are all different shapes and they're all different places and it even says in the book that the most important thing to do for the fit of a mitten is to make sure you get the thumb correct, right? Proper placement of the thumb. But it doesn't say anything about which thumbs to use in which circumstances, which thumbs are better for, you know, doing fair isle, which thumbs are better for if you have a design on the back of your hand, which thumbs are better for, I don't know, whatever other factors there may be. I don't know much about this because the book didn't tell me. Now the author does have a section on measuring your hand as well as a standard size chart. Now I like the standard size chart because I don't have standard size hands and I like to design mittens and publish them on Ravelry. So um, I like to have a standard size chart on me. Now there's a detailed instructions for mittens of all constructions, flattened in the round, top down and bottom up. This section does list pros and cons of each kind and why you might want to choose to knit a mitten flat versus in the round versus top down versus bottom up. It's worth noting that there are no instructions for any decorative stitch patterns of any kind. Lots of the mittens in the back of the book have beautiful cable patterns. Lots of the mittens in the back of the book have beautiful fair isle patterns. Uh, 
knit and purl patterns, but there are no instructions for these kinds of patterns. So if you would like to design with cables, color work, knit and purl stitch patterns, especially on the back of a hand or whatever, you will need your own separate stitch dictionary or just some creativity to come up with these things on your own. I mean, designing is creative. So I decided to really put this book to the test and design my own mitten. I found many of the complaints that I listed earlier about how to adapt the components to match my stitch counts. Most of why this mitten looks so bad, yeah, one, I didn't weave in my ends because I'm not going to make the second mitten. This was a test mitten and I don't like the way it came out so I'm not going to be making a second one. Uh, a lot of why it looks so bad though is because of my poor design choices. In my eagerness to get this review out, I didn't do as many swatches as I should have. I swatched for gauge, of course. But I did not swatch with my stitch patterns in my desired yarn. So you can see I have some bobbles up on the back of the hand of this mitten and they just look like mistakes. They don't look good with the tweed yarn. As well as the ribbing at the bottom, if I can move the string, the ribbing at the bottom is supposed to have kind of a bubbled effect and I really didn't do it for long enough to get that bubbled effect uh, in the cuff. And then also these bobbles down at the bottom, I had a little bit of trouble with those. The real test of this mitten is not my design choices, is not the stitch patterns I chose to put in. The real test of this mitten is how well it fits. Now, according to the standard sizing of the book, when I compare it to my hand measurements, my hands are weirdly shaped. They're very narrow and they're very long. Um, so what I did was I used the worksheet provided, plugged in my hand measurements to get a custom fit mitten. So this mitten should be perfect for me. The worksheet spit out all my cast on numbers and I went to knitting. It's worth noting, I'm pretty sure I did this correctly. The book doesn't mention anything about a patterned gauge and stitch patterns. Um, it carries the numbers from the hand circumference over to other variables, which are done in different stitch patterns. So I just basically used my stockinette swatch to go off to create the uh, different stitch counts and the different patterns of the mitten. So let's do a breakdown of this mitten from bottom to top because that's how I constructed it. I constructed the bottom up mitten. The cast on edge, known by the book as an edge treatment, is the bobbled edge found on page 27. When I was rounding off to find my edge treatment number, I actually had a hard time finding out what number to round to because the edge treatment didn't actually say, oh, you need a multiple of X number. I did find out what multiple I needed by reading the pattern really closely and deducing it on my own, but it would have been nice to have a, oh yes, make sure your number is a multiple of this. You know, I had never done a bobble before this, so that's why they look kind of wonky. Uh, the cast on fits when I try to put it on my hand a little tight. Um, I think the cast on wasn't made to stretch very much, and I have a very stretchy rib at the base, but the cast on doesn't stretch very much, it's not very elastic. And I think that if I would have known somehow that the cast on wasn't very elastic, I would have picked a wider cuff, a less stretchy cuff, and used a different, or used the same cast on, or maybe used a different cast on. So it's a little tight. When I, when I try to get my thumb in, it's pulling. I can get it on, but it's a little iffy. Now the cuff is a textured rib found in the book, Easy Textured Knits, on page 29. It has a slightly different number of stitches due to the stitch pattern having a different multiple. It worked out to be one fewer stitch, and I had no problem with that due to this book labeling their multiples quite clearly so I could see, oh, I need a multiple of X number. This book got that right. It fits, it stretches really well to fit over my hand and it fits nice and snugly at the base of my wrist. Um, I don't like my design choice as when the rib stretches out, it doesn't look bobbly anymore. It just looks kind of wonky. 
so I'm not a big fan of that. The thumb gusset I have here is the Western gusset style found on page 43. Now this is actually my second choice for thumb as I had a very difficult time trying to make the other thumb I wanted match my stitch count. Um, I had issues trying to figure out how to do that. So I actually changed my mind and did this thumb, which is a style I'm more familiar with. I've done this in other mitten patterns in the past. The fact that I had a hard time adapting it could have been designer's block. Could have been poor explanation on the book. I'll let you decide. It fits, uh, well, it's wide enough. Definitely. I was a little worried about it being wide enough, and the thumb is definitely wide enough. Um, there are holes in it because I didn't close up the gaps, and when I picked up a stitch, I picked up a stitch in a weird spot. So, um, that I will fix when I weave in the ends, or I would have fixed when I wove in the ends if this was a mitten that I was going to actually wear. Uh, the thumb gusset, it's a little, like my thumb is actually down here, and the gusset's up here. And even when I try to pull the mitten down a little bit, the gusset is a little bit uncomfortable. And I don't feel like I have free range of motion with my thumb. I feel like right here, I'm getting some resistance. So next, I have the hand circumference. And this fits perfectly. I, I have narrow hands, as I mentioned before. And mittens always are too wide in that section, and I have extra fabric hanging out over here. But this actually fits to my hand with about zero ease. I did a calculate for zero ease, and I ended up with zero ease. And it fits like a glove. It's uh, warm. It's warming. It's not flopping around on me. I feel like I can move my hand better without extra stuff in the way. I really, really like this for a custom fit hand circumference. They did a very good job in this book for doing that. Now, for the top, I chose the spoke top found on page 49. Uh, this is my biggest, probably my biggest complaint with the book. I wasn't given any guidance as to how long to make the hand before starting the top. I made some assumptions using the number of rows in the top and my row gauge, as well as my hand length. The top fits pretty well. I think I really like the way it looks. I've never tried a spoke top before. It had a really interesting decrease that I'd never done before, so I'm really excited about it. But I think I need just a tiny bit more room for my finger. And I think if the book would have given guidance as to how long to knit before starting the top, it would have been a lot easier, or at least giving me a way to do that calculation myself. Now, just like the top, I wasn't sure when to end the thumb. So I did the same calculations I did for the top, and the thumb actually fits really, really well. I chose to kind of mirror the spoke top and do the same thing on the thumb, and I don't think that worked out very well because there were so few stitches, but live and learn. Uh, I think some advice on the spoke top saying something maybe only if you have above a certain number of stitches this will turn out or whatever, uh, that would have been helpful advice to know. My whole problem with this book is that it doesn't give me any helpful tips. It gives me a lot of information, it gives me a lot of good knowledge, but it doesn't give me the little tips that I need to make sure my mitten fits perfectly. I have to go experiment and discover those on my own. Now if you're someone who loves to experiment and discover these things on their own. If you're someone who loves to make swatches and try things on and frog things and you know keep things and mix and match things, this is a wonderful book for you. Uh, but if you're someone who wants kind of the quick and dirty tips, this might not be the book for you. So anyway, this is my mitten. Fits mostly pretty well. Um, I did pretty good. Like this book, uh, definitely going to be using it to design some mittens of my own. Going to be experimenting with it to really get the most out of it. But honestly, I'm not a knitter who loves to swatch. I'm not a knitter who loves to experiment. I'm a knitter who loves tips and tricks and guidelines and um, ways to kind of make this my own, but not do too much extra work figuring everything out. Um, so. 
I'm a little disappointed in the book that it didn't give me anything uh, tip-wise. It gave me information, it didn't give me the tips. So, thank you so much for watching my review of The Mitten Handbook. This is my first book review. If you'd like to see more book reviews from me, let me know. Let me know what books you'd like to see, or if you know, I can just go through my knitting library and pick out a book or two. Um, I have a lot of books because I love to read and I love knitting, so that works out pretty well. Uh, thank you for watching. I will see you in a future video. Bye.